Hello friends. In the previous two video segments of convolutional codes, we did consider a convolutional encoder and we drew the state diagram, the state transition table and also obtained the output. We also got the output by drawing the code tree and if you do observe that for the input 10111, the code tree was huge. So as the number of inputs go on increasing, the code tree becomes larger and larger. So for convenience, I've taken the same state diagram. So to go through the example here, make sure that you go through the links which have been given in the description, where I have obtained the state diagram from the convolutional encoder, drawn the code tree, and we obtain the output as shown here. So now, in order to obtain the output, is there an easier method? So we find that the code tree is more explicit and is very huge. So we have another diagram which is referred to as the trellis diagram. We find that the trellis diagram is more instructive rather than being very explicit as in the case of a code tree. And we can say that the trellis diagram is a kind of collapsible version of the code tree itself. So let us see how we can draw the trellis diagram for the given state diagram and for the input 10111 how do we obtain the output. So let's begin. To draw the trellis diagram we have to follow a few general steps. So we observe that there are four states S0, S1, S2 and S3. So I indicate four states S0, S1, S2 and S3. So these are the four states here. So this is the initial stage, so we call this as say depth for i equal to 0, the initial stage. So the next stage I have here say a depth equal to 1, say i equal to 1. So what happens if the input is 0, if I am in state S0, if the input is 0, I remain at S0. So therefore, this is the next state, so I go to S0 itself. So this horizontal line represents S0, the horizontal line here represents S1, S2, S3. So if I have a solid line, it indicates that the input is 0. And if I have a dashed line, it indicates that the input is 1. So input is 0. And the output is 0, 0. The output is 0, 0 here. Now, if the input is 1, then what happens? I go to state S1. So that is indicated by a dashed line, which I have indicated in blue. And we find that the output is 1, 1. So we'll see how to get the output later. Right? So we'll first draw the trellis diagram. So after the first stage, I'm here at depth 1. Now next what happens, so again I have the states S0, S1, S2, S3 and for i equal to 2. Again if I am at S0, if the input is 0, I remain at S0 with output 0, 0. And if I get a 1 here, I go to state S1 with an output 1, 1. So that is indicated by a dashed blue line, output 1, 1. Now what happens if I am in state S1? Now if I am in state S1, if the input is 0, I go to S2. So therefore, I am in state S1, I go to S2, so that is indicated by a solid line. State is S2, output is 1, 0. So I write 1, 0 here. But if I get 1, then I go to S3. So you observe that I go to S3, which is here, so that is indicated by a dashed blue line. So the output is 0, 1. So I write 0, 1. So here after two stages I've got this. So now after the second stage I find that I have the inputs are S0, S1, S2, S3. So now what happens for the next stage I will get the complete diagram there. So if I'm at S0, if the input is 0, I go to S0 with output 0, 0. If I'm in S0, if the input is 1, I go to S1 
with output one mark. So we have already done that. Now if I am in state S1, if input is zero, I go to S2 with an output one zero. And if I have an input one, I go to state S3 with the output zero one. So this is what it is, zero one. So now what happens if I'm in state S2? So you observe that if I'm in state S2, if the input is 0, I go back to S0. So I'm in S2 here. So if the input is 0, I go back to state S0. So this is S0. So I go back to state S0. With an output 1, 1. And if I'm in S2, if I have input 1, I go to S1. So I go to S1, which is here. So I indicate that by a dashed line with output 0, 0. So next, if I am in state S3, so we are finished with S2, S1 and S0, so I am just left with S3. So if I am in state S3, if input is 0, I go to S2. So input is 0, I go to S2, which is by solid line. And then output is 0, 1. And if I get, if I have an input 1, then I remain at S3, that is indicated by a dashed line with an output 1, 0. So I find that here in this stage, all the possibilities are covered. You observe that all the possibilities are covered. Now if I have another stage, say i equal to 3, so even here, I would get the same thing which repeats. So from i equal to 3 to i equal to 4, what happens? The same diagram here, the same flow repeats here also. So let's just do it for one more stage. So what happens if I'm in S0? I go to S0 with 0, 0. If I have 1 as input, I go to S1 with output 1, 1. If I'm in state S1, what happens? I go to, I follow this, I go to S2. I go to S2 with the output 1, 0. So let me finish all the zeros first. If I'm in state S2, and if I get a 0, I go to S0 with an output 1, 1. If I'm in S3 and if I have a 0, I go to S2 with output 0, 1. So now let, let us finish inputs 1 for the state S1. If I'm in S1, if I have an input 1, I go to S3. So this is what I get. What, what is the output? The output is 0, 1. If I'm in state S2, if I have a 1 here, I go to state S1 with output 0, 0. And if I'm in state S3, I remain in S3 with output 1, 0. So I find that the same repeats. So we find that this pattern and this pattern are one and the same. So using one of the patterns, I'll be able to identify or obtain the output here. So now how do I get the output? So let's observe that. Now initially we assume that we are in state S0. So if I'm in state S0 and input is 1. So input is 1. So let us consider one. Let me consider this. See I just use this pattern here. So I'm in state S0. So input is 1. So I go to state S1 with an output 1, 1. So output is 1, 1. So I'm in state S1. Okay, so now I'm in state S1. If I'm in state S1 and if the input is 0, from S1 if the input is 0, what happens? I go to state S2 with an output 1, 0. So I have 1, 0 here. So now I'm in state S2 and I have 1 as the input. So when I have 1 as the input, I have to consider the dotted line. So therefore I go back to S1 with outputs 0, 0. 
So now again I will S1, the third, the fourth bit, which is 1 again. So if I'm in S1, if I have 1 as B input, I go to S3 with output 0, 1. So now I consider the fifth input, which is 1. So now I am in state S3. So when I am in state S3, if I have 1, I remain in the same state which is S3 with an output 1, 0. So now again I am in state S3. I need to feed in two more zeros here. And we know that why we have to feed in two more zeros. So check the previous video lecture. So I have to feed in two more zeros so that I get the complete output. So I am in state S3. If I input a 0, I go to S2 with an output 0, 1. So now I am in state S2. Again, if I input 0, I go back to state S0 with an output 1, 1. So this is what we have got. So we have obtained the output. So by just looking into one of the patterns, by just looking into the pattern of the trellis diagram, I will be able to get the output. So of course you can have how many stages? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you can draw 7 stages and you can actually track the output, track the flow of the output. Say, input is 1, so I move in this direction with an output 1, 1. So now I'm in state S1. Next, input is 0, so therefore I go to state S2 with an output 1, 0. Next, I have the third input which is 1. So therefore, I have to consider the dotted line, which is here, output 0, 0, I go to S1. And then I have 1, so I have to consider the dotted line, like this. So the output is 0, 1, and so on. So I need to draw three more stages. But without drawing the other three stages, by just considering one stage, you will be able to write the output. So every time you are in the next stage, you consider the input and then identify what is your output and you will be able to write the final output here. So you identify the output state, come back, consider it to be the initial state of the next stage and then taking the input, you will be able to write the next output. So however, in the examination for the given considered input, you may have to draw the complete trellis diagram. So here, I've drawn up to the stage here where you consider four bits. So for the first, second, third, fourth, and you need to, you may have to draw three more stages. But to get the output by just considering one of the complete stages, you can even write the output as such, right? So in the examination, you may have to draw all these stages here. So if the input is five bits, you may have to draw up to the seventh stage. It depends on how many extra bits are required so that you get the complete output. So of course the number of zeros you need to add to get the complete output definitely depends on the number of flip-flops you have in the convolutional encoder, so keep that in mind. So I've considered the same example across all the three lecture sessions so that it becomes easier for us to compare the outputs. So go through the previous two lecture videos to write the state diagram, to write the state transition table and then to draw the code tree, get the output and also verify whether your output is correct and then to draw the trellis diagram. Right? So that depends on the question which is asked in your examination and what is expected for you to write the answer. So do not forget to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications of all the further uploads. And to view all the other videos in information theory and coding, click on the i icon or go through the playlist, coding theory and information theory. Thanks for watching.